So what are you guys? We are the Sparkwood family. So a friend of mine, John, uh, posed this question to me. I think he actually got it from a TEDx riddle. So I'll look it up so, and post it down below so people can check the original video. Uh, because the riddle is actually pretty nice. It's something about like lights coming down, there are a bunch of vampires, you shine the light, you want to hit a bunch of coffins, etc., etc. Okay, but what it kind of boils down to is you've got a room, right, that's 78 feet by 49 feet, and then you have this light ray coming in, okay, at 45 degrees. And, and the thing about it is, if it hits a wall, it'll follow the law of reflection, which, which means it'll bounce, and whatever the incoming angle is, it'll bounce off at that same angle, okay? So, for example, if this incoming angle were 45 degrees, then it'll bounce off at 45 degrees, okay? And this guy basically just keeps bouncing around, etc., until it lands in a corner. So I think in the original phrasing of the problem, they tell you one that it's going to land in a corner, and two, I think they I think they point out that it's not this corner. I'm not sure. Okay, but I'll, I'll double check that. But anyway, our version is going to be a little bit different. Pretty much the same problem, except um, I'm not going to tell you if it lands in a corner. You need to figure it out. And then I guess the second part is going to be what corner is it land in, and the third part is how many times does it bounce around. Okay, so let's give this a try and see. Okay, so I mentioned those three problems you wanted to address. Uh, let's talk about that. So different ways of answering it. And I think you should definitely check out the TEDx video because they have a great solution in there. Uh, I just want to offer our solution. This problem, this is what came to mind. Basically, that 45 degree angle is really special, okay? And, you know, if you were graphing it, for example, the equation would be y is equal to x. So it's a really, really nice angle. Um, I think it'd be great if we can just take advantage of that. So, the thing is, is that if you do this, clearly this guy's going to hit the wall, and then it's going to bounce, maybe do something like that, I don't know, okay? So we can't just keep going along that line. But the idea is wishful thinking. What if we could? So if we could do that, that would make this problem much simpler. Uh, and as it turns out, we lucked out, you can. So if you visualize, kill this. A grid of guys like this. Where left to right it's always 78, up and down is always 49, okay? So here's our claim. When you hit, right, and reflect, so you come in at 45 degrees and you reflect off at 45 degrees. Instead of doing that, imagine you're just passing straight through, okay? So our claim is, even though it doesn't look like it from this picture, right, that this and this are identical, and the setups are identical, okay? So let me try to draw a little bit better, and let's try to argue this, okay? So first, as we come in, do you agree this is a copy of this rectangle? Now you kind of have to take this guy and flip him over. So you can see visually, if you flip him over, it's gonna be the same thing. But if you wanna be a little bit more formal about it, um, we draw this normal here. This is 45. We agree that our law of reflection says that this is also 45. Okay. But then um, from here, we have a right angle, right? So if this is 45, then this too must be 45. Likewise, this must be 45, okay? All right. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to erase this to clean this up. And now if we look at this, vertical angles from here to here, this also must be 45. Okay, again, right angles over here. So we have angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle. These are equivalent triangles, right? So everything is preserved. The distance here is the same as the distance here. The cross is the same. The angles are the same. This is a carbon copy of that. We've just taken this guy and flipped him over. So all the information we want from here is preserved in this picture. In fact, when you bounce over here and do something like this, this guy will bounce accordingly and do something like that. Okay? Does everybody agree? So does everybody agree they look like common copies? Okay. But now the trick is, I want to stay on this line. So we just keep this idea going. We repeat it. So now, if we want to capture this bounce, we want to keep going along that straight line. Same idea. You just pass right through. And using exactly the same argument, right? We can argue that this guy, this little triangle here is equivalent to this triangle there, right? And therefore, everything is preserved. Everything is the same. So we can just imagine he's going through like this. And again, instead of going on down like this, we just imagine it passes straight through, etc. So we can just keep our line going. And we don't really lose any information. Okay? All right. Now the question is, will it ever hit a corner? Well, clearly, the way we have it set up, the only corner you could hit would be an upper right corner somewhere. And that upper right corner, its coordinates in our grid, right? Well, if you're staying along this line that has this equation, right? then the x coordinate and y coordinate must be the same. Let's think about this for a second though. In order for us to land in that corner, right, we must have moved over an integer number of times from left to right. 
because you can't do like one and a half rectangles. We have to do one, two, three to land perfectly in that corner. Okay? So an integer number of rectangles left to right, but also an integer number up and down, right? So it's going to be something like and whatever distance we move from left to right must be the same as the distance we've covered up and down. We're staying along this line. So left to right, up and down must be the same. Okay. Then we do a little bit of math work. I think the y here is 49, and this guy is 78. They are relatively prime, meaning they have no factors in common. If you factor them into primes, 7 times 7, uh, 2 times 39, 3 times 13. They definitely have no factors in common. So the only way to get them to line up where they're equal to each other is to take your guy here and multiply by 49. And take our 49 here and multiply by 78. Okay, so the answer to part one is yes, it will land precisely in a corner. All right, but that doesn't really tell us, even though in our setup, it lands somewhere in a corner, upper right corner. That doesn't tell us with respect to the original box, after he's bounced around so many times, right? Which corner does he land in? Okay, so let's think about that. Since you're moving over an integer number of rectangles to the right and up, at least in our picture, right? Okay, what that means is, let's say the answer were two. Left to right, you move two. I mean, obviously that's ridiculous. So pretend it really was two. One, two. Okay. What that means is if you've gone one, two rectangles over, you've moved 78 over, and again, 78 over. And do you agree? You will not change your direction until you've covered 78. So for example, if I had a rectangle like this, now this is more realistic, and we went like that, right? We haven't covered our full 78. We've only covered this amount here. The whole thing is 78. But what's gonna end up happening is this. If we bounce and do this, right? If we bounce like this, right, we still haven't changed our horizontal direction. We're still moving to the right. So we only change and start moving to the left once we've covered 78, right? Once we've traversed 78 feet to the right, okay? So if we were the case we covered two of these boxes, that means you go 78 to the right, bounce off this wall, and then go 78 to the left, and bounce off this wall. And that's it. Or maybe land on this wall. So if it were two, it would be like you go 78, bounce off this wall, 78, hit this corner, done. If it were three, you go one, two, three. Done, like that. So you see that? I'm only talking about left to right. So it turns out, um, if it just goes one time straight into the corner, it would be one. If you have a two here, right, then you go one, two. So you've covered 78 two times, okay? What if it were three bounces? One, two, three. That would be three, and then four, and then five. But you get the pattern. So if you cover 78 an odd number of times, you're on that right wall. If you cover 78 an even number of times, you're on that left wall. And if you go over here in this problem, we've covered an odd number of times, right? So that means we're on that right wall. Okay. Same logic up and down. Sorry, it's getting messy. We could redo the video, make it cleaner if you want. But let me use this rectangle up here, just so we can talk about it. So again, the idea would be if for some bizarre reason we did this, and we did that. I know the picture's not realistic, but you get the point, right? As long as we're doing this, we've changed our left to right, but we haven't changed the up and down motion. You're still going up, still going up. Once you've traversed 49 going up, then you're going to start to head what? Back down. Somebody agree? So if you look at this, how many 49s did we cover up and down? We went 78 of them. So the first time, one is up, two is down, three is up, four is down. So it looks like odds are up, evens are down. This is even, so down. Okay, so what does this really mean? What this means is, after all this bouncing, in this setup here, right, we end up on the right and down. So that means we end up right here. Okay. So I think that's the answer to the original riddle. That's what they wanted. But let's take it one step further. Since we did all this work, we can actually figure out the number of times you bounce. Now, depending on how you count it, you could get different answers. For example, if, if it does exactly this, like goes straight to the corner and lands there, I guess you can consider that one bounce. I'm not going to. If you do, then you can just add one to the answer we get. But if you go straight from here to here and you land the corner, I'm not going to consider that a bounce. However, if you did something like this, and you land in this corner, I would consider this one bounce. Okay? So you bounce off that wall. All right. So again, if you're moving across left to right, 78, the first 78 take you over here, the second 78 take you over there. What we just said, if you go across one of these and then hit your target, right, I won't consider that a bounce. But if it takes you two of them, so you go boom, and then effectively boom, right? Then we're going to say, okay, that was one bounce. So you can see here, 
there were zero bounces. Here, if it went 78 twice, that would be one bounce. So it's always gonna be one down. So if you think about it that way, going left to right, this is 48 bounces, left to right. And we don't count that final move, because in the final move, you land the corner, okay? Same sort of logic here. If you went up one time, like here to here, you're done. But what if you went up one and then down and then right there? Then it would be one, two, but I would consider that one bounce. So I'm gonna subtract one, okay? You can do this more slowly if you want, but does everybody agree it's the same pattern? So if you went like this, just one. So one minus one is zero. But if you went like this, one, two, that would be one bounce. So two minus one is one, right? What if you went like this? One, two, three. That would be one, two, three. Three times you go up, 49, 49, 49 vertically. But the number of bounces would be one, two, be one less, okay? So 77, 48. So I think it's 125 altogether, okay? Now, one thing you might be asking, is there a possibility we've overcounted? And in this case, really no, because remember, every time you hit, you're either gonna hit a side wall or a vertical wall, and that is it. The only time you hit a side wall and a vertical wall simultaneously is when you land in that corner. Okay. So all good. So all in all, what happens? Do you land in a corner? Yes. Um, which corner? I guess it's the lower right corner. And then how many bounces does it take you? It takes you 125 bounces before you land in that corner. If you want to do this with better equipment or go through this more slowly or maybe more formally, uh, just let us know. So hopefully that helps and thanks again, John, for that problem.